God wants you to wear some Gucci gear, baby. God wants you to wear some Rolex watches. God wants you to go pick up a purse collection for your wife. God wants you to get the latest pair of jeans. God wants you to have some silver and gold. God wants you to get all of this. And I'm going to share with you in this episode of how the Bible can teach you how to. Are they gone? Are they gone? I'll bet you in their comment section right now. They're dropping negative. All the judgmental Christians right now are judging me and dropping message in the comment section below, right? Correct? Yes, yes. Okay, they'll be gone in about five seconds. Okay, awesome. Very cool. Five, four, three, two. Okay, now they're gone. They've stopped watching this video. But if you want to stick around and watch this video on how to avoid the single biggest way to lose money, according to the Bible, in this episode of the 7 Fear Squad happening in three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapali here, hailing to you from the Money Smart Home Office. And in this episode of the 7 Fear Squad, for those of you that care to stick around, uh, by the way, that was just a little bit of a funny introduction because I know when I'm talking about money, when I'm talking about success, when I'm talking about prosperity, a lot of judgmental Christians love to troll me on these type of episodes when I'm just pulling, extracting things that's in the Bible. There's nothing prosperity about this gospel. If there's prosperity in the Bible to begin with. And if you care to stick around and watch how God wants you to become wealthy according to his way, his, his word, his example, we're going to break this down here in this episode. So, all right, so let's get right into it. It's been a crazy week. I know with this whole Robin Hood, this whole GameStop, this whole issue about the average person, the average and ordinary common Joe with war with Wall Street, the billionaires, there's this clash that's happening right now. And when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking about the movies like Wall Street. I'm thinking about the movies like The Wolf of Wall Street. And the perception and the idea that people who make money are greedy. People that make money are selfish. That people make money are evil. I mean, take a look at this clip here from the movie Wall Street of Gordon Gekko talking about what is good. Let's check this out. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. And you see what I'm talking about was being portrayed? Now, in Wall Street 2, a billionaire was asked, hey, dog, listen, man. He was asking a real quick question. He was asking his billionaire, how much is enough? You're a billionaire. How much is enough? Look at what he said. Your number. The amount of money you would need to just walk away from it and live. See, I find that everybody has a number, and it's usually an exact number. So what is yours? more so you can see how wealth is portrayed in entertainment in the movies and i don't even have to go into the wolf of wall street we all know the craziness the prostitution and the drugs the stealing the inflating of the market they were doing with steve madden before this whole robin hood and gamestop and amc theater came about but how can we say how do i take care of my family according to god's principles and not feel guilty about building wealth. Well, I will share with you the opposite because according to the Bible, the single biggest way to lose money and never get financially speaking what you desire is this, get rich quick type schemes. Some symptoms might be, man, I, I, uh, I really want that Gucci this, that Gucci purse, I really, I really want to do it, I really want to buy it. I'm coveting it. And here's what a common definition is of the word coveting. Covet means to wish for earnestly an award, is to desire what belongs to another inordinately or culpably, to feel an inordinate desire for what belongs to another. Are you wishing, man, I want that, I want that, I want that. I'm sincerely desiring to be over expressive about your desire to have something that somebody else have instead of waiting on your blessing. Are you seeking more, more, more for the purpose of just more, 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 or worse, are you saying I'm willing to compromise basic morality, values, and principles to walk in the gray areas and say, you know, let's just do it this this once. Let's just, let's just break the law this just once. Let's kind of go in the gray, let's see if we can get away with it just this once. See, those are words that will cause you 
to be on the path of having the single biggest way to lose money and worse, lose time. So here are some of the consequences of what happens when one decides to choose greed as the marker for them to attain success, wealth, and prosperity. Let's take a look at the Bible here. My favorite book, Proverbs, it says here, such is the end of all who go after ill-gotten gain. It takes away the lives of those who get it. See, in your pursuit of getting what you want, it's going to take away everything. You might get success, yes. You might get riches, yes. You might have fame, yes. But you're going to be empty. You'll be all alone. You have nobody to enjoy it with. It's me, myself, and I. And you have gotten a lot of that achievement, but it's empty. It's null. It's void. And for some people, they wish they never got it. And the second part of your pursuit of wealth and prosperity and happiness through greed is number two, you're gonna be broke. Let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 28, verse 22. It reads like this. A stingy man is eager to get rich and is unaware that poverty awaits him. See, you're gonna get what you want, but at the end of the day, you're still gonna be broke. Number three, you're gonna compromise your integrity. You get what you want, but there's no integrity behind it. Let's look here again in Proverbs chapter 20. Now let's back up to verse 20. It says here, a faithful man will be richly blessed, but one eager to get rich will not go unpunished. Which means that if you're so eager to get rich and to be happy and success and wealthy, the wrong way, you're going to compromise a lot of things and you might just lend in jail and you might just get a fine and you just might compromise your morals, vows, and principles to simply just get money. And number four, it's going to give you a false sense of security. Let's read Proverbs chapter 11, verses 28. I want to add a couple of verses after this, but let's, let's read like this. Whoever trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous will thrive like a green leaf. Let's read the next verse. He who brings trouble on his family will only inherit wind, and the fool will be servant to the wise. Next verse in 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. So you got to ask yourself, what is it that I'm actually after? What am I doing this all for just to get it, to get it? You see, there's a specific way that God would love to see you become wealthy. There's a specific way that God would love for you to be successful. There's a specific way God would love you to have recognition, fame, and fortune. How? How do you know that? Well, it's written in Proverbs. Let's take a look. And before I jump into the scripture, I, have, I haven't disclosed it already. Listen, I'm just an entrepreneur. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a minister. I'm not a deacon. I'm just somebody in the church trying to figure this out. I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur in the marketplace. After Sunday morning service, I'm looking to find out how to figure this thing out called life and, and, and success as an entrepreneur in the marketplace, in the, in the business world, in the boardroom. Because here's, here's my thinking about what's going on in our economy. Here's my thoughts about what's going on in our country. That if we are, you and I are supposed to be a steward, right? We're supposed to be a steward. In other words, we're in charge of something. That the problem with the people that we have at Wall Street, at the banks, not all of them are God-fearing people. And yet, they are considered stewards too as well of public taxpayer money. They are considered stewards of the, in, the interest that they earn, the investments that they put in. The problem with a lot of them and that's why you need to rise up and fill these boardrooms. That's why you need to rise up and fill the marketplace with godly entrepreneurs. The people at the controls of what's going on right now is greedy. And they're compromising a lot of things. And that's why this whole thing of what's going on with Robin Hood and, and GameStop and AMC, in my opinion, is because people are mad. People are upset. And they just want to get back. That people that are suppressing them. But there's a right way to do it. I understand their anger. I understand how upset they are. But there's God's direction how to follow and how to attack and do this not only just for a one week or one month or one year, but how to do this for not only the rest of your life, but if you do this right, according to the Bible, it can be done for multiple generations. Imagine many of us, many of you and I, we get together and our families are successful according to God's way. How much of an impact will we collectively do in the marketplace, in this world, in this country, if we follow God's values and principles that he's outlined in his Bible that's transcended human history for over 2,000, 6,000 years of human history. So when we're looking at godly success, let's look at Proverbs chapter 14, verse 23. In terms of what we should be after, is it achievement or is it money? Which one is it? Let's take a look at the scripture. It reads like this. 
All hard work brings a profit. Let me just stop right there. All hard work brings a profit. My question for you is, are you working hard? Are you just like kicking back? Just relaxing? Oh man, I can't believe I'm not making any money, but yet you're relaxed. You're not working hard because according to scripture, it says here, all hard work brings profit. And here's a problem with a lot of people today. They want to make money the easy way. They want to make money on the couch. Now, can you do that? Of course you can. Of course you can. But people are like saying, I can, I can actually do this without having to lift more than two fingers. There's actually work and effort behind that. It's called work of diligence. Let me explain what diligence means. Let's take a look at this definition. Diligence is careful and persistent work or effort. Careful and persistent work or effort. So how does God honor Diligence. Let's take a look at Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4 reads like this. A slack hand causes poverty, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. Diligent makes rich, not slack hand. So when you're like, oh, I'm working hard. I'm working hard. I'm working hard. Awesome. But more importantly, are you working hard at the right things? And who gave you your definition of a hard work? Is it biblically based or is it what you think it is or what you've observed for the people around you? Let's continue back to Proverbs 14. Verse 23, again, all hard work brings profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. Listen, I've been an entrepreneur for 22 years. I see a lot of people in sales. I see a lot of people in business. I see a lot of people in the boardroom. Talk, 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 talk. Leave the boardroom. No, walk, 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 walk. Sit down, sit down, sit down. That's more importantly than what they're doing. And they're wondering why they're not getting wealthy. They're wondering why they're getting rich. No wonder why they're getting frustrated. So when you're looking at what you're actually after, you're actually after not the money, you're actually the diligence, the achievement of having the opportunity to work, to be able to put your efforts in something that can glorify not just yourself, but the achievement of what you embody and what you represent. In that attribute, then what will follow? Money. But if you're chasing money first, guess what? It's only going to be a slack hand that will bring poverty to your home. Second thing, labor, diligence, excellence, are you putting all these different things? People want excellence. People want excellence. People want the end result, but they're not willing to do labor. They're not willing to do diligence. Again, back to Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4. A slack hand causes poverty, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. What are your hands doing? Is it slack hand? Are you, do you just want excellence? Do you just want the recognition? Or are you not willing to do the work? Listen, we just interviewed a three-time pro bowler, a Super Bowl champion earlier this afternoon, which the video is about to release in a second. And he says, there's a difference between pro athletes and the great ones. There's a difference between the pro athletes and the great ones. We've interviewed Kobe Bryant on our stage. We've interviewed uh, all these professional athletes on our stage. Wayne Gretzky, Coach John Calipari. All these great athletes who are not just average Joes in their profession, but they're like the, the standard. And guess what all the commonality is? They're willing to go to work while everybody else wants to party. The slack can goes to waste, but the diligent makes rich. You know, there's stories upon stories upon stories about Kobe Bryant. Instead of Allen Iverson going to the clubs, he decided to go to practice. Yes, the thing that Allen Iverson didn't like to go, he's like, what, practice? You guys are talking about practice? Well, listen, Kobe Bryant took practice seriously, and that's why Kobe Bryant became Kobe Bryant. And here's another one. If you want to have godly success, you don't want to lose money and time, well, number three, avoid get rich quick schemes. Let's take a look at it in Proverbs chapter 23, verse four through five. It says right here, do not wear yourself out to get rich. Have the wisdom to show restraint. Cast but a glance at riches and they are gone. For they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. Sure, you can look at the magazines of the rich, wealthy, and famous. Yeah, you can look at the Instagrams of people that have all this and all that. Cool, no problem. But don't cast your eyes on that for too long. Look at it, glance it, and tell yourself this, by the way. If God wants me to have it, I'm going to diligently work at it. I'm going to diligently work for achievement. I'm going to do things according to his way, his will, and then he'll create doors of opportunity and, and moments where I could potentially enjoy those type of things. But if I'm actually coveting those things that I see on Instagram. If I'm coveting the things that I see that somebody else have, and yet I don't want to do the work, see, there's an order to things. You can't have your 50th step 
as your step number one. You got to have step one through 49 first. That's what diligence does in your life. So my friends, avoid, get rich quick. Listen, we were joking around the other day. We said that overnight success stories, overnight success in business, overnight success situations happen at least 10 years, at least 10 years, assuming that you've been working diligently at it. People would say, oh, I just want the success now, but you don't realize the eight, nine, 10 years of work up, of defeats, of failures, of setbacks, of doubts that go on in between. And people say, oh, I'm just doing this once, twice, three times, four, how come I'm not mastering it yet? Well, it's over and over and over because you are supposed to be diligent with your labor, diligence, and excellence in that order. And last but not least, if you want godly success, if you want to avoid the single biggest way to lose money and time, you want to be able to grow to give. Let me explain it here in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 26. It reads like this. All day long he craves for more, but the righteous give without sparing. Why do you want to grow? Why do you want to have success and achievement? Why do you want to have money? What's it all for? Is to just roll around in your money? to be unnecessarily overly expressive about it? Or are you growing to be able to give? How do you grow not to magnify you, but how do you grow to magnify him to be an expression of what God can do in your life, not for your own selfish greed, but for your own ability to give? Life gives to the givers, takes from the takers, and has a very accurate accounting system. So are you pursuing wealth just to get wealth, just to get money to get just to say you have it, or you're using it for a bigger benefit. Now, that is what God is after. God is willing to bless you. He's willing to give it all. By the way, God owns it all. God owns Gucci. God owns Lamborghini. God owns Rolls Royce. God owns purses and Versace and all that stuff. Question for you is, are you selling your soul to get it? Or along the way, are you wanting to magnify yourself so therefore you can be a bigger giver? Because the thing is this. I remember being a, being a time in my life, you know that saying, I got to fake it to make it, where you go out there and you potentially buy the, the Folex, the fake Rolex, or you go out there and you buy the knockoffs, for what? So you can look more richer than what you really are? How's God looking at you? God's looking at you like, hey, everybody, he's fooling everybody, but to me, he's fake. Who are you looking to please? Are you looking to please other people? Or are you looking to please God? Because if you please God, I tell you this, He's come down and you please him. He's come down and he's going to immensely bless you because he knows he can trust you with the least so therefore he can give you the most. Now, with that being said, I got to say this because it's the obvious. You guys like the Gucci, right? Looks, looks fly? Okay, cool. Now, my question for you is, do you think I'm wearing this for me or do you think I'm wearing this for God? Can I ask you a question? Did it cause you to watch this video? <laughs> Listen, I'm not saying that it's right, but... People judge a book by its cover. And I'm not here to convert the Christians to think of, of, of Jesus more. I'm here to share this video with those, for those that might be seeking, but you haven't found. For those of you who have been wondering, but you haven't connected the dots. That was me. And it wasn't until somebody broke these things down and said, hey, you can have success. You can have achievement. You can have wealth prosperity. And by the way, just to let you know, my wife and I, were debt free. We owe nobody. We owe zero. We have a house here, beautiful. We have a beautiful home. We have cars. We have... Children, we have things, these things. However, these things do not define us. Our income, our status in business does not define us. We allow God to define us. And in response to that, God says, hey, if you've been a blessing to yourself, I want you to be a blessing to other people. And the people that we honor to serve are the people inside our company. We haven't laid off anybody. We've actually added jobs. We got thousands of people across the country. We paid out last year in terms of compensation to our organization over $13 million to people who never thought about being an entrepreneur before. People never thought about biblical stewardship when it comes to their finances. So many ministry opportunities have come across the kitchen table because people had their money all over the place, but we have the opportunity to sit down and say, hey, this is how God wants you to manage your finances. Here's how God wants you to manifest success. The charities that we've been able to fund and finance, the, the people that we've been able to rescue through human trafficking and, and get, get out of that life because of the charities and nonprofits we support, the businesses we're able to bless because of our investments. See, that's what God wants to do in your life to you and through you if you allow him. 
But you see, none of that stuff, our house, our cars, all that stuff, we're debt free, but all that stuff doesn't define us. What this defines us is that God can look down upon us and say, yes, my good and faithful servant, what you've done with the least, now I'm going to give you with the most, and you can use it to bless other people with that. So with that being said, on your come up, if you choose to come up, how do you want to set up success for your life? Do you want to lose money in time, or do you want to gain money in time, but for whose use? And that's the biggest challenge that a lot of people have by creating wealth and creating generational wealth, your choice. So before I wrap up, I want to encourage you to watch this video, the book that caused me to make millions according to his way, which is the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes written by the wisest king who ever lived. His name, King Solomon. Watch this video and plow into Proverbs, Ecclesiastes and read that book of the Bible. I want to know your thoughts. I want to know your follow-ups. I want to know your questions. I want to know your insights. Drop them in the comments section below. I'm sure we have a bunch of uh, live chats going on right now, but I want you to drop it in the comments section below so that if we're recorded, we can get back to you. Uh, what are your thoughts about this type of stuff? What, what, what were you thinking about uh, uh, making money and not losing money? So listen, there's been many times in my life when I hadn't gotten my priorities aligned and I just want things for just for the sake of getting things, and I've not only lost a lot of money, but I found myself very empty and feeling that, what am I doing this all for until I found purpose behind my work? And I hope you do too as well. Look forward to it. With that being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe, hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. With that being said, guys, my name is Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala. And until we meet again, continue live smart, continue live smart, and be money smart today. God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.